Hey everybody, it's Wendy and today we are going to work on a little tutorial for this seashell, triple seashell pendant. So um, Dawn Holly had asked in one of the comments on the last um, budget beadbox haul if I would show how to finish this um, Coriana chain, which is what I use for a lot of these necklaces. I really like it. Um, it is on the Budget Bead Box website, and she has it in rose gold, gold, silver, and I believe gunmetal. There are several different colors of it. But I like it because it's really thin chain, and you can bead right on it. You can put your beads right on it, as you can see here. Um, it's just, that's my price tag, <laughs> sorry, I've, been, I've had this at a craft show. But um, you can just put the beads right on it. You don't have to, this is not a different section. This is right on the chain. And then if it shows, it's pretty. It's fancy looking and I mean, it looks like it's meant to show. So um, like Tiger Tail, you would not want showing up the sides, but this chain is really pretty. So we are going to make this pendant today and I will show how to finish the ends for Dawn. And uh, if you're interested in making this, um, just hang on a second and I'm going to get a, a, a supply list out here. So let me fix the camera. Sorry guys. It's on the edge here because I don't have a good system for videoing. <laughs> okay, so if you want to make this pendant, you're going to need three seashells in coordinating colors if you want. I mean, I guess you can do whatever you want, but I like them to coordinate. So these all have kind of this um, burgundy color on them and these all have the the brown or tan um, you're going to need jump rings to hook the seashells together so a big one for the first section a middle one smaller one so this is like 14 millimeters maybe I'd say this is 12 and this is six I think so you'll need that to hook it to the chain um, you'll need some bead caps you will need a way to drill a hole in your seashells, either using a hand drill or um, an electric drill, whatever you'd rather use. You're going to need some Coriana chain, which is this. You're going to need a head pin, um, a little jump ring for your lobster, class, cl lobster claw to hook onto here at the end, and a couple little jump rings to attach your... Um, ends here on the end of it. You're going to need a clasp. I'm using a lobster. And you're going to need some coordinating beads. So I've got some pearls here. These are a gemstone of some sort. I don't even know what kind. <laughs> um, some little silver spacer beads, some daisy spacers, and another gemstone here that I don't know what kind it is either. I'm really bad. I did not um, label all my gemstones back in the day when I first started beading and collecting things, I didn't label my gemstones. So now I do, but I have some in here and like this is my container of those ones and there's no label. So I have no idea what they are. Um, so there's a hint. If you're a new beater, label your stuff. <laughs> it makes life a lot easier when you get later on down the road if somebody's asking you, well, what is this? Or somebody wants to know what these stones are on this necklace when I'm at a craft show and I can't tell them because I don't know. I would just have to say, I'm sorry, there's some sort of gemstone, but I don't know what kind. So that's really horrible. And I was looking for the other ones in here, but I can't find them at all. So either I've used them all or I don't know, I just can't find them. But anyway, um, <clears throat> and I have used here a paint marker. This is by Treehouse Studio. It's a silver paint marker and I used it on the very ends of these seashells. You can see here just to decorate it a little bit. I did it on all three of them. It's a little more subtle on the small ones. So if you want to do that, you can use that. Those come in, um, I've got silver and gold. I'm not sure what other colors. I'm sure there's other colors that they come in, but um, that's what I have. And you're going to need your pliers, your chain nose pliers, round nose pliers, and your wire cutters. And I think that's everything. If I've forgotten anything, I will add it in the description box below, but let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I did, and I did this already, was drill the holes in my shell. So as you can see, this shell has a hole in it. You're going to need a hole in the top of the big one, in the bottom, and the top of the middle one, 
and in the bottom and the top of the small one. So you're going to need holes, you know, through, through the shells. You can use a hand drill. That's what I used. The electric drill, I find, is very um, iffy. I mean, it can break your shell. I do better with the little hand drill, even though it takes a little bit longer and a little bit more effort. Um, it's definitely better for not breaking your shells. Um, okay, so what you do after you get your hole drilled, I like to glue a bead cap on. I use E6000 and glue it on there. On the little one here, I've glued it on the front and the back because this shell is very fragile around the top. So I want to be sure and reinforce it. And this one, I just glued it on the front. So if your shell... If you poke your hole through and your shell does fine and it doesn't, it's not cracked or it's not real fragile, then you're okay with a bead cap just on the top. But like this middle one, it was really fragile and I was afraid it was going to crack. So I glued a bead cap on both so it reinforces it pretty good with the E6000. So the first thing you're going to do is we are going to go ahead and open our jump rings and put our shells together. So this big one. I'm just going to put through here and you just have to be kind of gentle with it because you don't want to crack them and close it up just like that make sure it's closed up real good okay so there's our first one the second one here I hope I can get through here like I said I used a lot of glue on this little guy Oh, it went through real easy though. Okay. And then we'll stick this one on. Close these up. And there you've got your little three tier shells. Now this one I used bigger rings on. So the shells hang a little farther apart. But I'm not a huge fan of these rings. They come up, um, open really easily. So I wanted to just use a little bit stronger rings on this one. So the shells aren't going to hang as far apart. But I'm okay with that. <laughs> so. And then we're going to add our final one. This one will go hook the whole thing onto the chain. I'll watch this be the one I have issues with, even though the other one's the one that's got all the glue on it. There we go. Okay, so close that up. Okay. Now, you're going to take your Coriana chain and just put it through the jump ring here. Alrighty. And there's what you've got. Okay, so now it's totally up to you how you want to do it. Creative control belongs to the maker of this necklace, <laughs> but I am going to start with a couple of these smaller beads because I tend to like to go big or small to big in the beginning. Um, I don't know why, I'm just that way. So I'm going to put one on each side. like that and then I'm gonna do a silver spacer and these like I said this chain is really awesome I mean you can just bead right on it I love it so much and the budget bead box website has it two yards for a dollar can't beat that okay now let's see let's do a pearl I'm going to go ahead and do a pearl and a spacer. Whoops. Spacer here. Sorry, I'm trying to work around the camera and it's. I'm not the best at filming to start with. <laughs> and then to try to do this with the camera like it balanced on the table in front of me. Yeah, it's just a recipe for disaster. But we'll get it done. All right. And then we'll go ahead and put another pearl. And I do not usually bead all the way up this Coriana chain. Um, you can. I mean, you can bead all the way to the top and not have any of it showing. But I like it. I think it's pretty. And I think it looks pretty when you just use a few beads and then um, 
leave some chain showing. So that's usually what I do, but some people don't like that look and it's fine. If you want to do it a different way, then do it a different way. So, but I am probably going to just put some beads and then leave the rest of it showing because I like that. Go ahead and use one of these mysterious gemstones. Oh no, is it not going to go? Some things won't go on this chain. Their holes aren't big enough and this thing doesn't seem to want to. Let me see if another one will. They may not. And it's okay if they don't. I mean, I've got enough other beads here, I think. that. And a beading all just does not work on gemstone beads. It will break them, especially these glassy kind yeah okay well that's sad those aren't gonna work so we'll just stick with what we've got it's okay um, those would have been pretty on there but oh well I should have tried them before I filmed this video that would have been smart but I didn't do that <laughs> so I've had this stuff laid out for quite a while actually to do this tutorial um, it's been in a little tray here on my desk, and I just hadn't done it. And then when Dawn asked yesterday how to finish the Coriana chain, I thought, oh, well, that's the perfect opportunity to go ahead and film this tutorial. So figured that's what I'd do. All right, so let's get a few more beads on here. Ooh, that's looking pretty. Might do just a couple more, and then that's probably going to be all I do. And you want to save a couple beads um, for your bead dangle, too. I'll always put a bead dangle on my necklaces, on my pendants. I just like the way that it gives it a little extra, I don't know, what makes it a little special or a little bit fancy. So, I, uh always do that so I save a couple extra for the bead dangle whoops okay so spacer I've got white paint on my hands we just my group at church um, I joined a crafters group at my church and we're we painted flower pots today so um, we're going to plant lemon trees and here in North Carolina apparently you can grow lemons which is really cool I think so um, we're going to plant lemon trees in our pots and I'm excited about that we didn't get to plant them today we talk a lot so we don't get much done really other than talking which is you know that's what we do we like it it's good okay so that is as far as I'm going to go. Oh, let me put one more little spacer bead though, because it looks, I like the way one more little silver bead looks on there. Okay. Now, let me check the length of this. The way I do that is I hold it around my own neck <laughs> and just see where it hangs and cut the chain accordingly. So, I'm thinking it's pretty good um, this way, so I just scoot it to where I want it to be. I don't want it to be super long, because most people, unless it's a uh, tassel necklace or, I don't know, you, there are certain necklaces that are made to be really long, but most people don't want them. Sorry, I just bumped the camera. Most people don't want them, like, super, super long, so let me check it one more time, because I adjusted it a little bit there. That's pretty good, I think. Let me go just a little bit more this way. There we go. Okay, I'm just scooting it to make it to where it's not super long. Okay, so this is what we've got right here. And I think it's really cute. So we're going to go ahead and finish the ends. So this is what Dawn was asking about this Coriana chain. Now, these little contraptions right here are from you can get them anywhere I got these at Hobby Lobby I think they're not very expensive they are actually for like leather or ribbon or I mean you can use them for anything but they work really good for this chain 
Now, I don't particularly like them. <laughs> Let me say that. Let me give a disclaimer. They're not my favorite thing to use, but they're the best thing that I have found for working with this chain. So what I do, in my left hand, I take the chain and lay it in this little thing. And if you can see inside there, it's got like a little ridge right there. And I guess that just is a grippy thing that keeps the chain from flying out. So before, I don't know. But anyway, I put a little bit out the end like that. And I just hold it on that little tab with this hand. And then I take my pliers. Now, please, Lord Jesus, let this work. Because half the time it does not work for me. <laughs> I'm really terrible. But I take my plier. and see if I can do this on the camera. And you just take your plier and you mash one side down. So, yeah. You just mash it down. Like, as hard as you can do it. You get, put a little muscle in there and just mash it down. Okay. And kind of don't pull on it yet because it still may come out. So then you flip it around and you take your plier and you mash the other side down. And this is the part that's a little tricky because sometimes this one doesn't want to go down over top of the other one. But you just really have to like just make it go. And I'm sorry, I know that I'm not getting it on camera, but it's kind of hard to, it really is hard to get it on camera. So... There we go. All right, now see how it's folded over like that? And then I'm just going to take my pliers and mash it really hard with both hands. Okay, so now if you pull on it, it's solid. It's not going anywhere. So that's what you've got. You've got this little thingy with two mash down sides. And then I take my cutters. Now be very careful not to cut this loop because I've done that before and it's pretty annoying when you have to like redo the whole thing. So just take your cutters and go in there and cut the little extra chain off just so there's no anything sticking out. So that's one side. Now this other side I need to cut because it was a little long. So let me even them out. And I'm just going to cut this other one. And put that down with my chain. Okay, now, same thing. Same thing. You're going to just take this little piece and lay it in there. Just like that. And then, we're going to take this plier. And get in there. I'm just trying to get it on camera. And it's really hard to do this on the camera. But I'm trying. Okay. And... Again, you're just going to lay it in there and mash one side down. Now this one acts like it's going to be funky. Don't be funky on me. Okay, here we go. There we go. Mash it down real good. Just like that. And then you go around here and do this side. Okay. It's, <laughs> it's really kind of hard. I don't like these things at all. But these are the best way that I've found to finish this chain. If someone has a better way, please, please let me know in the comments. Because <laughs> these are just not my favorite. They work good, though. I mean, it's not that they're bad. They work really great. Like, this chain is not coming out of there. You'd have to break the chain to get it out of there. It's just that I'm not very good at doing them. And, uh, yeah, it's always a gamble with these. Okay, for me, anyway. Maybe not for other people. Okay, so there we have it. So now, what we're going to do is we are going to take our head pin, and we're going to make a little bead dangle, and I do have a couple little beads left, so I'm going to put a spacer bead on the bottom, we'll do this one next, I'll watch the pearl not go on this, oh yeah, I did, okay, I was going to get aggravated there, okay, put our daisy on, and this guy, and that's probably good. Okay, and we're going to make a loop. I just take my plier and bend this over. Be careful not to crack your beads, um, your gemstone bead. And put it over like that. I do about the width of my finger, which is, I don't know how big, but that always works for me, and cut it. <laughs> and then I'm going to roll it back with my plier, chain nose plier, or round nose, I'm sorry. 
and I'm not going to close it yet because I'm going to stick it on here in just a minute. Now, one thing I forgot to tell you to have out, and I'm very sorry, I always put extender chain on my necklaces too because, I don't know, I want it to fit everybody. <laughs> oh, and I just dumped a whole bunch of lamp work beads in the floor. I'm sure you heard that crash. Okay, so let me find a piece of chain that I can use for an extender here. Here we go. All right, I'm sorry, I forgot to add this. So I always, like I said, put a piece of extender chain on. So there we have that, so sorry. Okay, um, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your jump ring and we're gonna attach our lobster claw. So let's stick him on this side right here. And you just put it through, Clo whoops, close him up. If I can get my hand around it, there we go. All right, close it right up. Make sure it's closed up good. I always go back after I'm done and check all of my um, jump rings and make sure that they're closed really good. Okay, then on this side, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this little fancier jump ring because it's gonna be the, the other end of the clasp for the lobster. So open that up. Well, we can't go ahead and close this loop. I didn't need to leave it open. Okay, open that up. We're going to put our, yeah, actually I did need to leave it open. <laughs> I'm tired, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, so put your extender chain on there and then put it through the hole here. Close it up. Make sure it's closed good because these things are thin. You see how thin that is? That can slip right out the open place if you leave your jump ring open. Okay, then on the end of the dangle here, or the extender, I'm going to put my bead dangle that I just closed up. <laughs> we'll open it back up and stick it on and close it back. Make sure it's closed up real good. Well, come on now. It's wanting to spin on me. I'm so tired. I, um... Didn't sleep good last night. I was laying in bed and I felt something itching or tickling in my shoulder. And I kind of just, I thought it was my hair and I brushed it and, you know, then I just forgot about it. Then a few minutes later, I felt it again and I like looked over and there was a bug on me. And <laughs> I don't even know what kind of bug it was because I, of course, freaked out and like flipped it. And then I couldn't find it. I jumped up and turned the lights on and couldn't find the bug. So... Yeah, I couldn't sleep very good after that because I was afraid it was still in the bed. Even though I, like, pulled the covers off and, you know, tried to make sure that it wasn't in the bed, I was worried that it was. So, I didn't sleep very good <laughs> because of the bug. But anyway, so I'm tired today. Um, and it is 7.30 at night. So, yeah. Okay. So, anyway, here we have it. We have our three-tier seashell necklace with our beads and here's the clap the ending here's our extender whoops just want to flip around there with the lobster clasp and dawn that is how you finish off the coriana chain and it is secure now like i said if there's a better way someone please let me know because i don't know what it is if there is but um this does work really good i just find these things hard to deal with just i just don't really like them but um, it is a great way to finish it. I mean, it's sturdy, it's secure, and it looks professional. So, um, so anyway, that is the tutorial. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. And like and subscribe to my channel and um, tell your friends about it if it's something that they might be interested in as well. And I'm actually getting ready after I upload this video. I'm going to film a video on these earrings because everybody wanted to see them everybody wants to know how to make these so we're gonna do that next <laughs> so if i can get that done tonight successfully without too many bloopers because obviously you've seen how this video has gone um i am going to try to do that so uh, hang out for that and um, i will see you in that video hopefully bye